Big Booty Bjorn is finally in the game, and guys, he's actually a good epic commander. You know the drill, cheers. Always keep a spare cold one. No, there was actually a little bit of soda still in there, fuck. So Bjorn is here, okay? We've known about him for weeks and weeks now, and he's finally here in the game. If you want to know how we got him and Ragnar so fast, make sure you stay till the end of the video where we open 650 Treasure of the Warrior Queen, which yielded 465 silver keys and 78 gold keys that we've been saving up. And I think we got some pretty sick results. Make sure you check that out. Also, if you're new here, about 80% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. Go ahead and click that sub button. I've literally got mouths to feed here, okay? If you don't subscribe and like the video, how am I going to afford to put food and water into my baby stomach anyway bjorn ironside is actually a really really interesting and useful epic commander here in rise of kingdoms now of course i've seen other rise of kingdoms youtubers make their video about bjorn talking about his utility and how he's actually pretty good and honestly i think some of the commander pairings that they gave were very valid and, and honestly really good but i think a lot of the commander pairings that i saw from from some of the other creators were you know a little bit of a, an early game pairing right like if you're going to be using bjorn primary i think that really can is only gonna fly through like kvk1 i think after that you, there's just no bjorn primary okay let's just let's be real look me in the eyes and just admit it okay if you're using an epic as your primary commander you're gonna get melted in the open field so why are people recommending bjorn as primary well that's because of his active skill when he's expertise and really you've got to expertise bjorn okay it's not gonna be that hard you know if you're a new player it may feel like you're, you're a long ways away but he's an epic commander you're gonna get him like crazy so the cool thing about him okay is that he's causing three targets in a fan shaped area to take an increased skill damage by 15 percent so the idea is if he's primary then whoever the secondary is is going to hit them with a powerful nuke in that three second window with the 15 increased skill damage taken and you know that that's the logic right and i and i get that logic and i again i think for kvk1 and pre kvk and things like that i think that's a solid plan and bjorn definitely should be the primary but i think if we're being realistic right bjorn's got to be the secondary he, he's just got to be in the primary has to be a tank that's just that's how i'm looking at it I'm looking at Bjorn as a almost like a Joan of Arc or like a, an Ethelfled, right? Or something of that nature where, in my opinion, they just have to be the secondary. For those of you who are new around here, okay, maybe you're a new player. This is why Bjorn has to be a secondary, okay? Can you tell me which of these two commanders has an epic as the secondary? I'm going to give you guys a second, okay? Maybe you're going to pause the video. Maybe you're going to try and zoom in. But honestly, from here, it's really hard to tell, right? It's really hard to tell because all you see is the emblem of the primary commander commander so what does this mean now of course you know if you zoom all the way in you could see okay yeah that you know if you if you know what all the characters look like on the open field then you could say oh yeah that's Bjorn okay I understand that but but again if you're in a massive murder ball in a big fight in Ark of Osiris or in KVK you are not going to be able to tell who has an epic secondary commander until their skill fire fires off but for most of the time 90% of the time you're only going to see the emblem of the primary commander so you might be saying Omniarch why does this matter and it matters because because if there's a purple emblem on the field, you're the target. You are going to be who people hit first because they assume that if you're using an epic, your command, your commanders aren't good, your tech isn't good, you're not a good player. That's what they're going to assume. And honestly, they're usually right. So in the long run, okay, KBK2 and on, and, and honestly, maybe even in KBK1 as well, you're going to want to use Bjorn as a secondary commander. But just because he has to hide behind a legendary doesn't make him a bad epic commander. I would argue that Bjorn is probably the third best epic commander in the entire game. We got we got Sun Tzu, we got Joan of Arc, we've got Bjorn. That's how it is, okay? Here's why I think Bjorn is, is getting that bronze medal. For an epic commander, he's actually dealing decent single target damage factor. Now, I know 700 isn't that crazy, but his fourth skill, which is 800 damage factor plus the 700. So, you know, you're getting a solid single target damage factor out of an epic commander, which is nice. But what's really nice is that you're getting 20% of stats here. It's not as good as the 30% that you get from other commanders, but the fact that he has so much utility in that three target damage debuff here where they're taking 15% increased skill damage that's crazy think of it like this when he uses his active skill in a big murder ball scenario then 
45% increased skill damage is happening as long as those people get hit in that period. Where do we see 45% increased skill damage taken? We see it here on Tamiris's fourth skill. This is the reason that people love Tamiris so much, especially in things like swarming structures or cities, right? Having a Tamiris there makes it way easier to melt that structure down because they're dealing more skill damage. Now we're looking at Bjorn and obviously, you know, you specializing and focusing all of that skill damage taken on one target is better, right? But again, this is a legendary commander. Bjorn is an epic. So the fact that you're still increasing the amount of skill damage that the enemy takes by 45%, it's just over the course of three targets. Yes, it's only for three seconds. Whereas, you know, Tamaris, it's that's an extreme comparison, but you, you can see what I'm talking about, right? And for the longest time, we've been in an AOE meta, right? You see tons of Guan Yu in the open field. You see Isong is everywhere. You're seeing Herald, right? You're just seeing a ton of AOE in the game right now. And if you have some Bjorn with you, that means that you're adding a ton of utility to all of your allies in the open field, because even though he may not be dealing crazy damage to everybody like Isong Ye, or he may not be able to destroy players like Guan Yu, having him there, at least a couple of players with a Bjorn as a secondary is going to increase the effectiveness of every everybody else around you to a staggering degree. Now, obviously we're going to have to wait and see, you know, how exactly is Bjorn going to play out in the long run. And you know, if you're in like an Imperium kingdom where everybody's a mega whale, you're never going to see him, right? Like, let's just, let's keep our expectations realistic here. Okay. I'm talking as an Epic commander, this is really great utility, which is great news for free to play players. Because if you're a free to play player, guess what? You just got a really solid Epic commander into the game. And and you actually can contribute in a very meaningful way in the open field. Now, I also think Bjorn is going to be really powerful in Sunset Canyon, especially again, early game free to play players. You're going to want to use Bjorn probably in this game mode as a primary commander, because it doesn't really matter. You know, people are going to know what you have regardless. So having him as primary is definitely a, bet, a good bet here, but imagine this, right? Okay. Imagine this right now. I can remove Joan of Arc from my Constantine and we can throw in Bjorn. Okay. And I want you guys to follow follow exactly what I'm what I'm doing here what I'm talking about okay I want to see when exactly Bjorn's active skill goes off here okay because we know that Constantine engages in battle first which means his active skill is going to go off before Ethel fled in the back row so I just want to see we've got boom there it is Bjorn goes off and then we see Ethel fled goes and then we see Isong Ye goes so that's really important to know the timing there because if you have Bjorn as secondary that means that he's going to apply that 15% debuff to three targets targets before Ethel fled deals her skill damage behind him and before uh Isong Ye deals his skill damage as well plus we've got Guan Yu over here who's also dealing skill damage now his skill damage is happening over in this area so perhaps this wasn't the greatest example but you can play around with this and you can see exactly what's going on here you can see that my my Ethel fled is just absolutely chunking things staying alive in that back row and just doing a ton of work Ethel fled and Isong just dealing crazy damage in AoE and all of that is ideally getting buffed by the Bjorn in front of them. Now having Bjorn there, is that really the best strategy? Who knows? Is it better than the strategy I had before that? Maybe not. Right. But I'm just trying to give you guys an exact idea of how I would be thinking about using Bjorn if he was one of my best choices, but let's talk about open field pairings, right? Like if you're going to be going into a KVK, a big murder ball or Ark of Osiris, who would you put in front of Bjorn to make the best use out of him? Well, clearly, clearly we've got Richard the first, right? We, we want to have really tanky primary commanders because eventually people are going to catch on that. You have an Epic as a secondary, which is going to make you a pretty big target. And you just want to keep that, that utility alive as much as possible. Same thing here with Charles Martel, Charles Martel, great choice, right? Because if he gets swarmed that extra counter attack damage is going to be really powerful. And even though Bjorn isn't dealing tons of skill damage, at least his skill damage will happen during that 30% damage bonus window, which is nice. Of course you could go all out with Guan Yu primary, but I think that March is going to get melted down pretty quickly. Same thing. If you do an Alexander, Alex primary Bjorn secondary, I think eventually it's going to get melted down pretty quickly, but at least you do have that shield here and you're adding to the support role with that smaller shield as well. Constantine is actually a really nice one because I feel like a lot of people just avoid Constantine just in general. They see him in the open field. They know that he's doing some really nice buffing to his allies, but at the end of the day, like he's not dealing any damage at all. So, and he's kind of a pain to kill, right? Like 
like usually it's a pretty tanky army if there's a Constantine there so I feel like a lot of people just don't swarm Constantine I don't know maybe that that's just my experience my Constantine tends to get swarmed last when I'm putting out a bunch of marches in the open field but maybe you guys have a different strategy maybe you focused Constantine but for example Constantine primary Bjorn secondary he's gonna deal a little bit of damage which Constantine is lacking but Constantine provides the bulk and the legendary uh, avatar frame to hide behind in the open field which is nice and again Constantine really does play that support role really really well and if you wanted to go full support and damage you could do Ethel fled primary with Bjorn as secondary and you're probably gonna get swarmed down instantaneously because people love to pick on Ethel fled in the open field but hey that is a really solid support March in the open field and she does do nice damage which is true 465 silver keys 78 gold keys let's see how many of Bjorn we can get let's see how many of Ragnar we can get honestly we're just we're just gonna open all we're just gonna open all for the silver keys let's see what we got here ladies and gentlemen boys and girls I did see a, a couple of skull hang, hang on hang on hang on hang on hang on so we got uh what is it six Bjorn <laughs> we got six Bjorn here absolute trash so damn 15 Scipio only a single Sun Tzu man that's crazy that's crazy okay so uh, with with 400 and over 400 silver keys you still can't get enough to even summon bjorn okay so if you guys were saving up sorry to say it's, it ain't gonna happen man dude dude we were we were one away from having a real nice amount of these brand new starlight sculptures that's that's real unfortunate right there and mark's woman all right let's pop open all 78 in the gold keys i'm gonna i'm gonna look i'm gonna look oh wait i gotta hit yes okay okay so let's take a look here we've got 15 hours of speed ups meh it is what it is decent amount of stars honestly 13 stars we got a bundle and a bless that's pretty cool we got nine we got nine bjorn iron side sculptures so with 78 gold keys you may be able to summon him right off the rip so there it is if you guys were curious let's go ahead and scroll up here a little bit more did we get any full summons of bjorn it looks like we did not we did get eight of ragnar his sculptures alone so we almost got enough to summon ragnar off of 78 gold keys i feel like that's really good oh and we got a full summon we got a full summon of ragnar right there boys and girls let's freaking go honestly i love the fact that i got a full summon of el cid too and we got a ton of julius caesar we got some Ahmed. this is this was actually this was better than i thought wow that's actually that's actually great wait a minute i got 18 ragnar sculptures and i got 16 bjorn sculptures how the hell did i get more of the legendary I love this screen is my favorite screen in the game also did you guys notice that you can buy Saladin Constantine and Tamiris now in in like the shop here like in the daily special offer like that's that's actually crazy these are really really powerful commanders even late game come on give me a bunch of Saladin baby come on oh nine oh nine let's go my little baby Saladin on his way if you made it all the way to the end of this video hopefully you guys found it useful or informative and if you did make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players will see it as always if you're new around here make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video as always there's links to all my social media accounts in the description below so make sure you follow me over there on Instagram Twitter discord all that stuff it's always down below Below, as well as a link to download rise of kingdoms absolutely for free for your pc it's a program called blue stacks and it's my favorite way to play rise of kingdoms i've been using it for years and it's a free way to support the channel and also if you don't like it you can always you know uninstall it later with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni archive we'll talk to you guys again soon peace